Welcome, welcome to Creative Arts Apothecary. I'm your host, Marina Teller, and I am so happy to introduce my guest, Ray Shagalov. Shagalov or Shagalov, Ray? Well, it's interesting because the family says Shagalov, and even if we introduce ourselves as, hi, I'm Ray Shagalov, the person immediately says, oh, Shagalov. <laughs> so either is fine. Ray has been a carpenter, a shepherdess, and is now a master calligrapher, author, and founder of the Passion Project's Mastermind for Jewish Women. Ray has a passion for helping women and children develop their gifts and talents to bring out the greatness of who they are, to build a world of peace and plenty. With the help of God, she has coached over more than 4,000 women and children to fully develop their creativity and launch their fabulous creative ideas into the world. In Ray's Passion Project Mastermind program, she guides a warm community of creative Jewish women, showing how to use our 10 Kabbalistic soul powers, according to Hasidus, to balance our lives and our business, achieve successless time, and get the loving support and accountability we need to shine our light and develop our special life nurt nurturing passion projects. So find out more at creativejewishsoul.com, and we will link this video to, to Ray's work, Ray's publishing company, Holy Spark, specializes in Jewish education through creative expression and integrates deep Torah learning and beautiful calligraphy in coloring books and art journals in her Joyfully Jewish series. Ray's books are available on Amazon and include The Secret Art of Talking to God, Create Your Joyfully Jewish Life, Living in Gerula, and many more. So you can download a free printable gift at holysparks.com forward slash freebies. And again, we'll link to this gift which is very generous. Ray, welcome. Thank you so much. It's just uh, always such a pleasure to hang out with you in general and to be part of your really wonderful, transformative, life-changing series on creativity. Awesome. Thank you, Ray. I appreciate that. It means a lot coming from you. Um, I'm a part of your passion project group and every time we're able to get together even outside of the group I get super excited so for the sake of this conversation we'll we're gonna hone it down to to one subject <laughs> I'm laughing because our one subject is is multi passionate living life as a multi-passionate person it's our one subject is how we have many subjects. Exactly. <laughs> oh, the irony, right? But okay. that's, the way, that's the way it is. So you are such a great example of being a multi-passionate person and um, the, the incredible, uh, the many talents that you have and the different directions that you've taken it in. And um, I'm guessing that most of the people who are listening to your series, to this series right now are also multi-passionate creatives. And um, what does that mean even? It just means that you're a very rich, interesting person with a lot of varied interests and you love life and you like trying new things and you're curious and um, you wanna do it all, right? And yeah. <laughs> good news is that you can do it all. You just can't do it all at the same time. Right, so there are certain strategies for balancing things out. And um, multi-passionate people also, you know, have a, a big challenge because people, you know, the, the way we work as creative people is very different from the way um, corporations work or employers work. So the way pro productivity works in the corporate world is a kind of soul killing for the way productivity works for creative people and especially multi-passionate people who are working on many different things. So the main advice is, and it is true, if you want to get something done fast and bring it far, just focus on that one thing. But for creative people, and especially ones with many different, who enjoy so many different directions, it's kind of like saying, well, just lock all of your children up in the closet and take them out one at a time you know, until they're grown up and then take the other one out. It just, it, it just doesn't work. We can't, you know, but there are ways um, and we're going to get into that into the, in the workshop today about how to nurture all of those wonderful passions without going crazy and, um, you know, to kind of organize them and how to focus on one at a time 
while keeping the others in focus. So good. And, and if I could just back up a little bit and say, yes, we're going into the strategies. I'm still just so happy <laughs> for the validation because I spent so many years hearing like, okay, pick one thing already. Like, what are you doing? So I was feeling guilty or, or kicking myself for having all these different passions, not exactly sure how they all relate. And and they do. Like you said, with the example with the kids, they're all related. Oh, they are. Just, yeah, that's um, right. And right, they're siblings, we, right? These are sibling projects. Yeah, absolutely. So just that sheer validation alone, that permission slip, is uh, means a lot for me. And I wanted to acknowledge that. So yeah, so let's get into the strategy. What do we do? How do we so, how do we make it work? Before we do that, there's uh, probably another message that you've got quite a lot, which is, you never finish anything you start right? Because a lot of times we don't. And that's perfectly okay, right? So we have we have the one message, never give up, don't be a quitter. And that's also true. Like even, you know, multi-passionate people need to pick one and bring it to completion and then choose another one to bring it to completion while still, you know, giving, having the sheer joy of exploration that we you know, that's so important to our souls. So um, there, you know, again, that, that's that's the main strategy we're going to do today um, is to, you know, to look at how to, um, you know, have what the, the power of quitting when it's necessary to quit, you know, why we're going to explore um, the phases, you know, of the creative process, the dips and delights of the creative process, including what you know, we we really learned in our you know in our mastermind over the last year and a half, especially for women, how important the pause is. You know that that we're going to go in more depth into it, but the pause is such an important place in the process. But the pause looks like quitting, right? So mm -hmm. it's very important. A lot of you know any of the negative voices that might be hanging around on your shoulders and in your head. You know, whatever those are, um, they're they're probably pointing to something in your process that's really important to you. You know, it's just that it's like, ooh, they're probably right. They're probably right. You know, well, if you were working in in uh, Google or something, it might be right. <laughs> right. But I think even in Google, they have something called the Genius Hour, which is just like exploratory time. Like they do really appreciate those sort of side journeys and you know off the off the main coding job whatever it is um so they get it you know the, even in the in, in the career in the um corporate business world so um another you know I, I came to this work um after just you know recent fairly recently retiring from 30 years of developing you know helping children develop their gifts and talents and um, when I uh, was furloughed during the lockdown period and then offered to come back, I, I realized I want to pause and now, con and now continue by developing this for women, specifically for Jewish women, and take those kind of same strategies that, I, that were so successful with children and, um, you know, bring them up to this new level. So... That's when I met you and, you know, learned so much from you and our other passionistas and in the mastermind about um, just, uh, you know, just all the adjustments that we need to make to keep things going and keep our light shining really, really strong. But I did want to include in the presentation how to do passion projects with children, too, and that that is our workshop today, um, how to create your passion project vision board which helps you kind of pull all the different elements together so that, and you can do it for each one of your passions or any one of them, you know, mul multiple times so that you really understand in a very full way um, what your passion project is and who it's going to serve and how. So good. Yeah, very good. I mean, in terms of prioritizing, it's, it's a balance, right? As we'll go into it, there's, there's a balance between 
letting go and stick to itness. So it's like honoring both of those qualities, everything in between. And it's really sorting out like what's really at the at the heart of this vision. How do I keep that in mind? And then it um just it, it makes it more it makes it doable, makes it uh, easier. <laughs> and um and with the community component, that idea that we're not alone if I'm having this issue most likely someone else is also having this issue and making it less personal and more like, oh, how do we do this? And I really like that about working with you. Thank so, you. And in that community, we were just discussing today and this morning's mastermind, how when you, you know, in a, a, a mastermind is when, se- you know, several people get together or many people get together to um, each kind of take turns in the spotlight, um, bringing bringing your project, your passion project forward, and then um, receiving the advice and support from the other people in the mastermind, kind of rotating that around. And what we discovered is that when you're deeply listening to someone else and called upon to help them with certain challenges, you're then bringing down this great wisdom that you would not otherwise have accessed. And very often, you know, it's exactly the wisdom you need to hear for yourself. But because your situation is different, you know, you wouldn't you, you wouldn't get it directly, but you do get it in the form of helping someone else. So cool. In the form of helping someone else, you arrive at that key to unlock where you are. And that's, I love it. Can you can you uh, prepare this presentation or can you tell us how, how does it work? There's I know there's a downloadable companion workbook that goes with it. Uh, Yes, so it's, um, we're going to go into a recorded presentation. And um, so you'll need to gather your journals, your notebooks, your colored pens or colored pencils, um, or even a black pen, that's fine. And I'm going to guide you through this process. I'm going to show you the different templates and things that are available to you um, when you go to uh, joyfullyjewish.com forward slash roadmap. I have uh, the Passion Projects Vision Board Roadmap, which is a workbook with those different templates in it. But you also don't need that. You could just, they're, they're fairly simple kinds of templates and, and um, you know, creative people will do it their creative way. And um, so either way, um, but just make sure really ultimately, I, I do suggest that you have a binder to keep your materials together because that's one of, one of, one of our many great challenges as multi-passionate, what I call it, grown-up gifted children, because that was my specialty through the years of uh, working with gifted children, is that we tend to be a bit scattered. <laughs> we have ideas and they don't come out in order and you know, I'm focusing on this project, but there's this great idea for this other project that I'm working on. And so we need places to store those until we get to them. And Absolutely. Not, not push them away, not stuff them away, but let them flow, right? Because mm. that's, that's the other important balance is adjusting. This is what I found a great deal of my work is both with children and with, with women is adjusting the tension, mm. right? So we want to be in creative flow. We want to be in that beautiful, relaxed, holy state. But at the same time, we, we need tension in order to bring it to completion. We need to know that they're, you know, that it's serving a certain person. They're waiting for it or there's, you know, there are due dates to these things. So we have to adjust the tension so that there's not so much and, and, um, but enough to bring us to completion, but that's, we're going to go through all of that in, in the presentation. Super. Ah, so cool. And I love this. I don't play a musical instrument, but that adjusting the tension made me think of like a guitar or a string instrument or like, oh yeah, don't fear tension. I need it. It makes that sound. Finding that. Ooh, I love it. All right, let's do it. Let's jump into the video. So now we're going to start our soul journey together, creating our passion projects vision boards. So if you haven't already got it, grab your journal and your pens or a binder with some paper in it because this is an interactive workshop. My goals for you today is one, to help you plan your passion project with clarity so that you can be intentional about your focus and tap into your joy to create Geula, 
the world of complete peace and plenty that we all long for. When you do this, my friend, you are doing it for all of us. And my second goal is to help you understand the dips and delights of your unique creative process. My spiritual master is the Lubavitcher Rebbe, Rabbi Menachem Mendel Schneerson. And he has left us with thousands of teachings. And one of them is in a collection of daily inspiration called the Hayom Yom. And this little bit I wanted to share with you from the 16th of the Hebrew month of Elul. Our sages teach whoever sustains one soul is considered as if he had sustained an entire world. When one does a favor for an individual, it's a favor to all those souls that will come from this soul until the end of all generations. My friend, your passion project will touch generation after generation, and it will affect all of those that the person that you inspire through your project, all of those that they come in contact with, are going to also be influenced by the light that you're going to share. Now, part of my job through the years as a creativity coach is to help adjust the pressure so there's just the right amount of, t of tension, right? Not too much that it makes us feel paralyzed, but enough that we realize that we this really needs to get done and we're the ones to do it. So here's the thing, it's urgent. I'm sure you've noticed, like I have, that the world has gotten really crazy and pretty dark. This is the time for us to unite our talents together and encourage them in our children and grandchildren with the focus of bringing the world to the ultimate good this is what we're here to do right now. So, now I'm going to ask you a question. Are you willing to embrace a new possibility for your life? New vistas, new ideas, new things coming in ways beyond what you can imagine? Well, you're not alone, and we're here to help you. So what is your gift, and who needs you most? That's what we're going to identify today. That's what we're going to begin how can I make you happy? How can I help you feel good? Those are different questions we can ask as we are developing our passion projects. The master of the universe chose you, my friend, to do this unique work that only you can do. From the beginning of creation and throughout all time, no one was created like you with your unique talents and strengths and weaknesses too. For you to develop and turn into strengths through your passion project. So let's take a nice deep breath right now. I want to introduce you to what I call the one minute miracle meditation. It's very grounding and centering and invigorating and it can really help you transform yourself in a moment. Even in a single breath it can help you change your mood, can help you expand who you think you are. So just take a deep breath and breathe in that breath of life, enlivening you, enlightening you, invigorating you, energizing you, creating you. And breathe out anything that feels dull, not so lively, any anxieties or negativity, any feelings of overwhelm or distractions, just let them go. And take another deep breath in and visualize and imagine that the master of the universe is breathing your soul into you right now. Fresh, brand new, full of infinite, unlimited possibilities. And breathe out anything that feels old and stale, anything that feels too hard. Just let it go. And one more time, take a nice deep breath and really connect to your partnership with the divine to bring into this world, because this is where it's at, to bring into this world all the light that you have to share. 
can breathe out any feelings of unworthiness. Just let them go. And that's it. You can do this one minute miracle meditation anytime, any place in just a moment to get reinvigorated and to feel and fit into a broader, more expansive version of yourself. So what is a passion project? A passion project is a creative activity or endeavor that you pursue because it inspires you and gives you deep satisfaction and great joy and the feeling of complete fulfillment. It tugs at your heart and pushes you to fulfill it. It nags at you if you put it aside. It says, do me, do me. And it energizes you. Your passion project may be in income generating, might be a business idea, but that isn't the main motivation. Expressing your passion is what drives you. It's the way that you can shine your unique light in this world. Your passion brings out the best in you. Your passion project may be very therapeutic and also at times very stressful as you push yourself beyond the limits of who you think you are. A passion project is not an escape. It can feel like a really happy, wonderful escape, but really it's just the opposite. Finding and immersing in your passion project helps you connect more to yourself, to your family, to your community, and to the master of the universe. Now, when you do your passion project, you want to give yourself permission to fail because you don't know what you're going to encounter. Sometimes it's going to work. Sometimes it's not. Undertaking a passion project is a transformative experience. It energizes and uplifts you and inspires those around you with your commitment to it and your integrity. But most especially, people get inspired by your commitment to your ideals, to your dream. Passion projects amplify your childhood curiosity, giving you permission to explore again, to try and sometimes fail without feeling like a failure because that's the nature of exploration. My friend, you only fail when you stop trying. Nothing is ever wasted. Every effort that you make while you're trying to figure out what your passion project is, while you're trying to complete it and bring it out into the world, all of those efforts, even if you decide to stop to do the big pause as we're gonna talk about in a little bit, none of that effort is wasted. It will come around into something bigger, fuller, until your dream lands in this world where it's meant to do the most good. And most of all, your passion project is really a great adventure. You might think you already know what your passion project is, or you might think you have no idea what it is. But either way, you'll find that you're going to surprise yourself. Discovering and developing your passion project is going to lead you on an exciting adventure into the unknown depths and delights of your inner soul, into your strengths, strengths you didn't even know you had, and into your creativity that might go in all different directions or go deeply in one. So my friend, enjoy the journey. It starts right now. But first, let's, let's see, where are you in your creative journey in the passion project process? So one of the people that I studied with as an educator and a gifted education specialist for 30 years is Joseph Renzulli, who is the head of the gifted and talented PhD program at the University of Connecticut. And he identified three phases of the talent development project, which happens through passion projects. And as I began, stopped working with children for a while, paused that and started working with women over the last 18 months, I realized that really there is more than three. And that's what we're gonna go over right now. So as we do, jot down in your journal, where do you think you are in the passion project process? It begins with exploration, the exploratory phase of a broad range of topics, ideas, or experiences until the urge or excitement for one takes the lead and then moves into what we call a rage to master, 
the information and the skills that are related to it. Like maybe you decide you just have to know everything there is about calligraphy. So you buy all the pens, you, you look at the YouTube videos, you take some classes, and you just have to get to the point where you really can do it. Whatever it is, whatever direction your passion project goes into. This then leads to either mastery of the information or implementation and experimentation to master the process or complete the project. Now, it could also be that you jump from exploration right into implementation and experimentation, as so many children do, and then you gather the information as you need it, as you're experimenting and implementing. But either way, it leads you to the next level, and that level is mastery. Now, it might not be complete mastery, but it might be mastery of a small piece of whatever this is. And at that point, you then become the inspiration for the people who are in the exploratory phase. You become the person that can give over this thing, this passion that you're excited about, and then excite them about it too. Now, all along the way, this is the part that uh, really I discovered working with women. We had a chance to really explore deeply. All along the way, you'll see these overlapping bubbles is what I call the pause. The pause might be brief, might be for an hour, might be for a day. It could be for months or even years long. I have projects that were paused for 30 years that I'm bringing forward now and even longer. Or it could be permanent because the experience has served its purpose. Whatever you got in this unfinished project was enough for you. It satisfied you. And you don't know where it's going to come back and be useful again later. The main purpose of the pause is to get back into that feeling of beginning, that excitement when you're really the excitement of exploration when you're starting fresh again. But the pause can be some other things too. The pause, the negative aspects of the pause can feel like exhaustion or anxiety. It can feel like confusion or sadness. But really what it is, is that the pause is where you're resting. You're integrating what you just experienced or what you just learned. Or maybe you're evaluating, should you continue with this? Should you not? You know, what's the value of doing this? Or it can be, the pause can be where the transformation is happening within you. So what's your passion project? Even if you think you already know what your passion project is, that's just the beginning. It will lead you into new depths you can't even imagine until later in your journey. When you begin your passion project, you walk through a gateway, a portal. And then as you go through that and start to develop it, another portal opens up and you walk through that. And maybe when you get to that next level, two or three or four portals open up. And, and you're continually either moving forward through this journey in, in expected and unexpected ways or pausing, kind of in the plateau, or kind of keeping it going, gathering the experience that you need to really make it solid. And if you think you have no idea what your passion project is, don't worry. Exploring your interests could be your passion project for now. Just view the search as a fun adventure and see where it leads you. So now we're going to begin your passion project roadmap. This is something that you can sign up for and download. Um, you'll see the different templates that we're going to be using for that, and um, you can get your own that you can print off and use and reuse. I recommend that you actually do set up a binder and um, keep track of what's going on with your passion project. I have a lot of tools and things to help you develop it, templates and art notes and different things to help you figure out where you are along the, along the way in the roadmap. But we're going to do three today starts with exploring the things you love to do and create. And then the second step is choose your passion project ingredients, which we're, I'm going to show you in a bit. And then to create your passion project vision board. So you're clear about all the different elements and aspects of your passion project. And it will remind you again when it, things get murky. So the first step is to explore the things you love to do and create. The first step of discovering your passion project is to give yourself permission 
to expand your dreams and desires in all directions. It's time to explore the inner landscape of your soul and give yourself the space for your passion project to unfold. So what I do, would suggest that you do is you set, really just get like a, a, a separate notebook and on the front of it, write a thousand things I love and start listing off what are the things that you love and try to be very, very expansive with this to like really clean out every corner of your experience and your memories. Really try to stretch yourself. You might not be able to think of a thousand things, but reaching for that number will help you stretch beyond the normal limits of your imagination or the, or the things that you usually think of from your daily life. Include things you would like to do, things you'd like to create or collect or see or explore or things you'd like to find out. You might want to browse through a bookstore and look at all the, or a library and look at the different kinds of topics that there are that maybe you haven't even thought about in years or taking walks or, you know, touring some place in your city or your town or your village that you have never really explored before. If you get stuck, when you, when you download this, you can color in the border or doodle in the borders of your journal to relax and it helps you think even more deeply. Try to unlock it all. Write down anything and everything that has ever interested in, has ever interested you or that you have even a remote interest in. Include things you've already done, things that you're doing, things you wish you could do, even if it doesn't seem possible, even if it's wild and crazy. There's some element there, some information in there that's going to help you unlock your passion. Think of things that you wanted to do as a child. What did you want to be when you grew up? And really anything that you would enjoy or that you're curious about or that you think you might love if you had the chance. All right, so at this point, you might be feeling really overwhelmed. A lot of the women that I work with at this point, they're like, no, this is too much. I have too many interests. I have too many passions. There's no way I'm ever going to do them all. I'm going to tell you something that I hope you're going to find very freeing. It's not your responsibility to complete every idea you have. You are not even responsible to complete all of your greatest ideas. If you think about it, how could you? You'd need several lifetimes. But by writing this idea down, you are drawing it down into this world so that other people can access it, and that can be enough. Our sages teach us that when we are in the highest level of connection with God, that there are these ideas are in these high levels, but when we bring them down into this world, then other people have access to them too. I don't know exactly how this works. Can't really explain it, but I'm sure you've had an idea at some point, maybe an idea for a children's book, and then you saw, oh, somebody did it. It could be that when you thought of that idea, you made it available to that other person too, and they just ran with it. So I hope that helps adjust the tension. The main thing is that you don't want to suppress your ideas. You want to have a vessel for them. In this case, the vessel could, is, could be your journal, could be your binder, your thousand things you love binder, so that your creativity continues to flow. So there are five passion project gateways that I've observed through the years of working with thousands of children and women. One of them is, in no particular order, one of them is passion. What do you love to create or do? So something from your list that really stands out for you. Another gateway are the people, types of people that you want to work with, or it could be, it could be animals also. It could be any, any sort of audience that you are really called to work with, really enjoy, enjoy serving, and that might be elderly people, might be infants, maybe it's preschoolers or high schoolers, um, maybe it's people who are, um, who are in need, whatever that particular audience is for you, it's best to try to like really hone in on 
the type of person and not make it uh, very general, but make it as particular as you can. The third gateway is a problem or pain point. What bothers you? What in the world makes you angry or upset and you really wish you could change something about it? And maybe you've already begun doing things to work on that, to make it better, make something better in the world or fix something that's just not right. Usually that's an easy gateway. Everybody can think of something that bothers them or a problem that they would like to do something about. The fourth gateway is your purpose. What's your mission? What do you feel your purpose is in this world? Some people know this, that this is not always very easy to get to, but maybe you already know what that is. You really feel that you're, what you're calling is what, what the master of the universe is asking you to partner to partner with in your life. And the fifth gate gateway is a product or a service, something that that specific audience really needs, or maybe you just have a real drive to create something and um, you love knitting scarves or there's a certain kind of um, camera or software that you want to develop. So those five gateways, any of them, and sometimes more than one, and ultimately you want to address all of them to get to your passion, project, profit, sweet spot. Now that profit might be um, financial profit, it might be spiritual profit, it might be um, just joy profit. All right, so let's move into the passion project vision board your passion project vision board. I have a template for you. Again, if you um, sign up for the passion projects roadmap, or you can just, you'll look at the one that I've done and, and create it for yourself. Your passion project vision board will help you become very clear about what you want to accomplish. So you can ask the master of the universe to help you bring it into being. Our sages say that the end is embedded in the beginning. Your vision board will help you stay motivated, especially when you're in the midst of the murky middle, when it can be hard to remember the excitement and the clarity of the beginning of your journey. Okay, so before we begin that first version of the Passion Projects um, vision board, it's time to choose one. And you don't have to worry that it's the perfect one or the right one, but this tool right here is something that's very easy for you to draw in your journal and will help you just intuitively assess. I call it the Priority Assessment Intuitive Energy Rating. And it just helps you kind of figure out what are the leading passions, or leading passion projects, or just any projects that you want to work on so that when you hit those spots in the day or you start identifying in your calendar what you're going to do, on which day or how much of the day, this tool will help you kind of figure out the proportions of time. So you'll see there are arrows of different um, lengths here, and you can do that in your, own, um, in your own journal. So the main project, the main thing that you're working on, your main passion project, that will be your longest arrow. And then the other ones that you also want to do, um, you just draw with kind of intuitively feeling how much of a percentage of your time that you want to devote to each one of them. You know, is it something you really want to do, but maybe you don't need so much time in the week to do it, or it's less of a priority for you than you would give it a short arrow. And then anywhere in between. So the good news is, for all my multi-passionate friends, is that you really can do it all, but you can't do it all at once. So this is a good tool to help you do it one at a time, but still leave a space in your, you know, in, in yourself to know that you're going to do these other things too, but you're, you've got your eye focused on the main one. All right. So here is a, the template that you can um, sign up for and download, or you can just create the version, a version of this for yourself. So you would put in the middle, what is your, in the, or the largest space, what is your dream project? Describe it. Um, what is your, I'll just kind of go clockwise from there. What are the, some of the things that you love to do? What are, what is a problem, the problem that you want to solve? And maybe you'll solve 
it you'll solve something small in a great way or maybe you will solve something great in a small way even the most difficult problems in the world you can there's always something at least a small something that we can do about it okay so then you you know keep front and center what your main passion project is and how you want to transform through it or how you want to transform others or help them transform through your passion project. If it's something you're selling, what is it? What is it that you're going to actually be selling? And what are the talents that you want to use? What are things that you want to create? There's a place here at the bottom for your mission statement. Um, what do you want to teach? And who are the kinds of people that you want to help? And it could be your own family. It could be yourself. It could be one person. It doesn't have to be a vast audience. Okay, so by doing all that preliminary work, you know, then you have this, you fill it out, you, you know, gather pictures or draw them yourself or paint, make it beautiful and attractive and put it up you know, on your wall, put it up on your fridge, put it somewhere where you're going to see it and it's going to remind you of this dream of yours and how you're going to bring it into being. Okay, so I also, because my, you know, my, my love for 30 years was working with children and helping to develop their, their talents through passion project based learning. I want to make sure that um, I include this formula It's a 26 word formula. Now I've had different versions, 14 words, 18 words. But I wanted to share it with you for the children in your life, whether they're your own children, grandchildren, nieces, nephews, neighbors, um, or your students. Um, this is this works really well from about five years old for kids who are you know a little more advanced, all the way up onward. I call it the foundational formula because it's the foundation of all entrepreneurial and all altruistic endeavor in the world. Every company, every organization has to address this formula in some, in, in some way, or, you know, most of this formula in some way. So when you teach it to a child, you're helping them create a portfolio of experiences over and over again, so that they really can start their own companies or organizations by starting small. So here's the foundational formula. Create something that's needed for someone who needs it that helps solve a problem or teaches something important, doing what you love in partnership with God. Okay, so that's it. This is a, another way for you to develop your passion project vision board. That's basically what we, you know, all the all of the things that we just went through, but put into one sentence. Okay, so when you're working with children, you can help them brainstorm and try out different possible solutions and encourage them to look for problems that are close to them in their families, in their neighborhood, in their school or community. This is a great way to train leaders to look for those problems, not wait, you know, till they're they're assigned, but to actually look. And children are really magnificent at this. They are, I've seen hundreds and hundreds of projects from children of all ages that are just really um, quite extraordinary. They really can identify the problem and create solutions for it. Okay, but it might not be that they are helping to solve a problem. It might be that they want to teach something instead. And that might be the passions or interests. And when you guide a child to teach what they're learning, then it, um, it helps them, uh, you know, to develop their leadership as well and builds their self-esteem in an authentic, truly authentic way. And then the in, par in partnership with God peace, that's really the foundation. That's where our help comes from. That's where we, in, you know, incorporate our values. You know, for those of us who are Jewish, we incorporate Torah, we incorporate mitzvahs. And um, we can really lean in, you know, in those difficult parts of the pause, we really lean into our partnership and check in with the master of the universe because it is a full partnership. And that way we have access to a greater greatness you know, than our own very limited sense of self 
All right, so I hope that you were able to follow along and that you have a journal full of ideas. This wasn't a, a great deal of time, so, but you know, it's always easier to start from something than it is to start from nothing. So now you have a starting point. You can go back into any of the things that we've done and explore them more, expand them more. And if you go to, uh, I'll put it up here in a moment, but you can go to um, joyfullyjewish.com forward slash roadmap. And I have a whole uh, Passion Projects roadmap workbook with all of these different templates and things that you can download and print. And I have put in there also how to start your own mastermind. Now these are a, a couple of pieces that we didn't have time to go over today. You know, I've been running, thank God, my passion projects mastermind for um, almost two years. And um, I, it, it's just a phenomenal way to make sure that you keep going. Because when we're just doing it for ourselves, we let everything else, you know, come first. But when we have a group of people who are supporting us and, and expecting us to do what we say we want to do and who are helping us overcome different obstacles or challenges and giving us ideas, it's a whole nother level. It's like having your own team. And within that, even choosing an accountability partner. And I have a page here that helps you with some of the suggestions about how to find and work with an accountability partner. And then if you decide to put a few people together and do your own mastermind, I, I've given you here in, in that packet, the Our Mastermind Agenda format that has been working so well for us. And then there's some other tools in there like for settings, you know, um, creating your milestones for a whole year and then breaking them down into goals and action steps, specific goals and action steps. Okay, so if you would like to receive that, you can go to joyfullyjewish.com forward slash roadmap. You can also contact me there on the website if you have any questions. I would love to hear what your passion project is or what your passion projects are. If you're a multi-passionate person and if I can help in any way, please feel free to contact me and ask any questions.